coming out here to the the park, obviously, this is something you know just very familiar. Growing up, you know, you know, myself as well as a lot of kids, that's where we first started playing basketball. Is on the black top uh, on the playground. It's kind of where you learn the game, competitive, being competitive, and you know, playing against older players. I wasn't gonna let anything get in the way of me fulfilling that dream and that goal. And so I had to come outside to the park. And this is where, you know, first train the first couple of trainees um, right here out on the black top. Okay, you can't get good just by a couple days of camp. Now this will help you get better but if you want to become a good basketball player, you got to keep working with it day in, day out. How did this come to be? How, what, what is driving you to do what you do? What drives me is I know that uh, pretty much every young person who picks up a basketball has a, has a dream uh, that attached to their basketball. And so when I first started uh, training, I noticed that kids needed basic skills, the fundamental skills, uh, was a starting point. But as I got into the, the training more in depth, you know, like a year in, a couple years in, I started realizing that players wanted to, you know, be a starter on varsity, or they wanted to make it to, uh, on their varsity team, or some kids want to make it to the college level. And so players have a dream when they pick up a basketball. And so that's what drives me. It's like everybody I encounter, matter of fact, that's what I start with. What are you trying to accomplish? And I just get a great deal of satisfaction helping a young person reach their goal. What's the next thing? Where do I get my power from? Your legs. My legs. So if my legs come up, my hands do what? They go up. The hand goes up. All right. Now, what if my elbow be? This young man that we're about to go in here watch now, he's definitely one of my <laughs> favorite uh, young people, my son. And so, you know, just appreciative uh, of the time I get to spend with him, just, you know, teaching him some things that I work with other players. You know, it, it's, it's nothing like uh, also being able to be a part of your own kid um, developing as a student athlete. So, you know, he's nine right now, so we have, uh, you know, a long journey ahead of us, but, you know, I just want to start instilling those things in him while he's young. So, uh, the principles are, are the, the same. You know, some of the things that help you be successful basketball are uh, those same things that can help you be successful in life. And that's, you know, with the, uh, the book, The Eight Steps to Become a Champion, you, you know, I know that, that I wrote, it, it's somewhat geared toward, you know, athlete um, or youth, but, you know, I was having this conversation with a young lady last night, and I said, Hard. Yeah, it, you know, it, there are stories in there about, you know, uh, some of the kids I trained and, and how they used courage and heart and adversity and mentality and preparation and opportunity and, opp uh, and never giving up, how they displayed that throughout their career to help them reach a level of success. But, but the principles themselves are not just something that pertains to basketball. That, that method can be used in anything that you do. Uh, Haley Trenum was a young lady who played for Celeste, Texas, uh, or played in Celeste for Celeste High School, uh, which is a 1A school here in Texas. And uh, she had aspirations to play at the college level. And in our um, Hunt County 
basketball, we're not in the Metroplex. So we don't have the visibility that some of the schools have. And so for her to have the aspirations to play college basketball, it was a, I won't say necessarily far-fetched, but it wasn't a sure thing. I mean, um, the odds were against her to be able to play at the college level. And she, matter, matter of fact, wanted to play at the Division II um, level. So her accomplishing that, that's a great feat, being that she came from such a small school and such a, um, an area that doesn't have a lot of visibility. And so those are the type of situations that drive me. Because I know that when someone, a young person starts playing basketball, most time they have a dream. And so I want to find out what that dream is and let's go try to make that dream become a reality. Um, just a lot of reasons why that is significant for me. One, just for the person to realize their dream, but also just to, for young people to be able to dream big, to, to go after stuff that they really want to accomplish in life. What is your heart desire? Let's go try to get that and not just settle for what's right in front of you. Uh, going to local games, you know, just I saw a need there. I saw a need for young people to have someone to help them with their skills. And so um, I got intrigued by that. And so when I did actually resign, I was like, okay, I don't have uh, a job at this moment. What better time to go and explore this, to go see if I can actually uh, make a difference in young people's lives and, you know, once I got it started, um, I thought it was something that I really enjoyed. And so the next step was, how do I be able to do this full time, do this as, make a living doing this? How do I do this as, this is my career. Um, and so that's the path that I went down. Um, the early years is <laughs> like anything, you know, a lot of uncertainty. Uh, you know, rocky start. Um, I remember when I first got, you know, my first brochure and, and all that stuff together, going out to uh, asking people for um, gym space to start the program. Um, I couldn't find anywhere to to actually, you know, no gym to use, uh, no real facilities to use. And so that was one of my first um, obstacles and hurdles that I had to overcome. You know, I was just determined to do it. And so I was like, I'm gonna find a way. So I'm at this crossroad on this job at Compass Bank. And it comes back to me again. Like something that was just pulling me to going to work with athletes, going to work with young people. And so, I didn't have a job, so this was the best time to go see if I could make this happen. And I was at a point in my life where I wanted to experience really what life was about in terms of going to do something I wanted to do. Not just go do it out of necessity. I gotta go find a job, I gotta go. But I was at a point where I was willing to take the risk to find out what my true calling is. What, why was I placed on this earth? Why am I here? And I felt like that was one of the things uh, that was drawn to me. You know, I said it when I was a, a, a teenager or, or adolescent, I, and then it came back to me when my early 20s, and I couldn't put it off. And so when it, I got to be my 30s, I was like, Something keeps pulling me, something, something keeps speaking to me about working with young people. And so at that point, I was like, I'm gonna go all in and put every, all my energies and effort to making this happen. And so you asking me about the skill set, uh, you know, back, you know, back when I was younger, I could play a little bit. You know, I was a, a shooter. Uh, even though, I, like I said, I didn't have the traditional um, career that some other athletes 
but I still could shoot a basketball. I spent a lot of time um, growing up, you know, always in the backyard shooting, um, you know, spent hours doing that kind of stuff, playing with older people or whatever. So I developed, and then I had, you know, some natural athletic ability that I was blessed with. Um, but as I got older and got into where I was working with kids, I had to get myself to where, to a level that I want to show them that I can also do those things that I teach, that I also, also could do. I just wanted to be authentic in that. You know, I didn't want to be with somebody that, you know, just trying to tell somebody, but then they're looking at it like, man, I don't know if you can do this too. And so I spend a lot of time uh, honing my skills. Uh, I didn't, at the beginning, you know, start from scratch, no clientele, no, you know, and so it was a lot of uncertainty, but I had to have the courage to give it a shot. And so throughout the process, you know, cause I learned some of the skills, but you know, first took courage to go down that road to see if I could make this work. And then as far as like the heart to be, uh, stay dedicated to it, even when things got tough, you know, not having the gym space in the beginning, or at some point you have a few clients, but you don't have enough, you know, and I speak about it in my book where it was a hobby, <laughs> uh, considered a hobby the first couple of years, because although I was working with some kids, it wasn't, um, it was sustaining itself. The business wasn't sustaining itself. And so I had to have the dedication to keep fighting, keep believing, keep getting better, keep getting new information to actually take it from a hobby to an actual business. Uh, and so during those times where uncertainty, doubt, and fear was creeping in, I had to stay committed to it. Uh, overcoming adversity, you know, not having gym space was uh, an adverse situation. Um, and, and then um, not always having the amount of clientele was needed was, was a bit of a adverse situation as well. You know, how do you grow um, the program? Uh, and so mentality, I had to have a mentality of believing that I could do this. Like, I didn't have to have all the answers as to, but just the belief that I can do it. If, if I'm dedicated to it, if I work hard enough, if I stay committed, then I will be successful at it. So just having that winner's mentality. And then the preparation part is what um, made it all come together. It's just me constantly, me believing, but not only believing, then putting that belief to action by preparing, staying ready, you know, whether it be the hours that I put in the gym to hone my skills, whether it be the hours I've studied the game and aspects of um, how to teach the skill set, whether it be just developing the hours spent to develop on a business acumen, uh, and so it was just constant, constant preparation and preparation to develop the service that I'm offering, but also constantly developing me, me becoming a better person, me becoming uh, a better father, me becoming a better husband, me becoming a better mentor, uh, skills coach. Uh, so that has come out of this process just through the preparation. Uh, Inspiration would be, uh, I mean, I can draw inspiration from different sources, but the primary inspiration has been the young people that I actually work with. Um, me having an opportunity to help them reach their goal it, it, it's no greater satisfaction. Oh, that's one of the, the greatest sources of satisfaction for me, is me being able to see a young person reach their goal. I set out to do this, and us working together, our hard work, we actually uh, were able to see that dream, that goal, become a reality. Um, then opportunities, you know, I'm constantly look, uh, 
taking advantage of the opportunities that's in front of me. That's, that's kind of my motto, just what's right in front of you right now. Are you doing the best job possible? What's right in front of you? Uh, just stay focused on what's, and then the never giving up was, you know, until you reach whatever goal it is that you set out to do, just keep working every day, keep striving for it, keep believing. Uh, if you get knocked down, get back up, just keep working. And so uh, that's um, some invaluable things that I've learned throughout this process of going down that road, not going down the road less travel and not just continue to live in a life that was going to be easy or uh, that I can make sense of or um, wasn't as much risk or wasn't necessarily, you know, me going, not say that the job interview is bad, but me going to a job, job interview is not as fearful as me trying to go out there and start a business <laughs> from scratch. <laughs> so it's a totally different level of fear, but I just look back on it and wouldn't change it for anything. And um, Cause we only live once, we only live once. And so um, it'd be just hard for me to fathom what my life would have been like had I not just at least tried. Just, just see what, what, what would happen. You know, and I feel like uh, my life is different because I went down that road and maybe some other people's lives is different too. And so that makes it all well worth it. If somebody can say, hey, because I knew this guy, because this guy crossed my path, my life is different. Then all these years of the hard work, the, the dedication, the ups and downs is, is worth it. That's life. That's actually living. The, the sus being successful or having some success, being knocked down, having to get back up, having to overcome adversity, having some disappointments and overcome those adversities, having to get out of your comfort zone, uh, having to keep getting better. You know, when challenges arise, or, or you gonna rise to those challenges? Are you gonna? So. Um, these are the things that I had to learn, and, and these are the things that I've had to try to instill in players or will be instilling in the future. So I'm so thankful that I went out there on that journey and just the, un, the unknown, and uh, so it, it's paid off, and I'm grateful. I think you just wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. <laughs>